The Dawlish Warren Beach Management Scheme is an environment agency-led engineering project to improve the condition of the beaches and to manage the flood risk to the properties and infrastructure in the ex-estuary. The Beach Management Scheme is needed because the coastline is eroding, threatening the dune system and increasing the flood risk behind. We know under climate change scenarios that there will be increased storminess, increased sea levels, and that'll have an impact then on erosion in terms of coastlines, on beaches, on cliffs. We would expect flood risk to increase to nearly 3,000 homes. That main rail line into the southwest, that would be under greater threat. So what you've got to think of as Dawlish Warren, it's, it's, a, it's a wave break, a wave barrier for the wider estuary, and that's the economic value it has as a flood defence scheme. The main process that shaped the Warren is longshore sediment transport. So sediment coming in from the west, extending into the estuary and building the spit system. The problem is that there's no longer sediment coming into the Warren. You're turning the sediment supply off and the Warren will slowly disintegrate. Dawlish Warren has a particularly thin section which we term the neck. And the concern of the Environment Agency and others is that in a series of big storms that'll breach and open up Dawlish Warren and through that gap, and it's historically it's happened in the past, will come increased waves and higher water levels. And there are nearly 3,000 properties in the estuary which then suffer from greater flood risk. It's a natural spit feature that over years has been changed by engineering and human intervention. It's very important that we do what we can to maintain and improve the condition of this habitat. And part of the scheme is to make sure it can function as naturally as possible. The ex estuary has a number of different habitats at the upper estuary, it's predominantly mud flats. As you move down the estuary, the material becomes coarser, and so you have sandbanks. And then to the sides, you have the important marshy areas, and that's where the birds go to roost at high tide. And of course, you have the dunes of Dawlish Warren, important habitat there. Up to 600 flowering plants have been identified on Dawlish Warren alone. And then, of course, you have the beaches as well. So the ex estuary has a number of important habitats. By not doing what we're doing, that beach that used to be a wonderful natural feature would be narrow, steep course, and it wouldn't be a very popular amenity beach. Historically, there used to be up to half a million visitors a year to Dawlish Warren. So with the replenished beach, we do expect a return to the sort of numbers of tourists that were visiting the site 30 or 40 years ago. When we started, we went back in time to get as much historical mapping and photography, because what's happened in the past is a good indicator of what will happen in the future. The hook end, the distal end, have been flattened during storms. It, it's, it, there's good evidence of it happening in the 1870s, there's good evidence of it happening in the 1940s, and it's safe to say if the defences weren't in place in recent years, that would have happened again. So we use that information to work with nature, not against nature. And that's a very important part of sustainable management. One of the fascinating things that came up with the research we did as part of the scheme was finding out the social history of the site. It caught us by surprise when we saw photographs of very large houses, a colony on the end of Dawlish War and what we now call the, the distal end, the hook end. And there was a whole community that lived on the Warren. But unfortunately, there was a series of storms in the Second World War, which changed the, their lives completely. The, the storms caused significant erosion, and they had to be evacuated. Sometimes when you visit the site at low water, you still can see the foundations of those houses there. So it's a fascinating little insight into how the coast changes. With a complex large scheme like this, you need to take into account a whole range of factors. You need to take into account the views of everyone who has a, a stake in the area. There's the properties behind the Warren that need to be protected from flooding. And then there's the cost implication as well. So it's actually quite complicated to balance all these different interests to make sure that everyone's sort of happy with the scheme. Public consultation was very important. Because it's such a well-known and well-loved site, a lot of people had an opinion. Often the mantra as part of our public consultation exercise is, this is what we think, what do you think? Everything we do, everything we've planned for and building, it comes under a certain amount of local and academic scrutiny. 
The coastal structures on the Warren, the groins, have actually helped contain the sediment within the Warren by keeping some of the sand there that would otherwise have been taken out by the longshore current. So they were helped. The coastal structures west of the Warren, they've actually prevented some of the sediment from coming into the system. Following the storms in 2013-14, a lot of these structures were actually falling over, so they had to be rebuilt. When we take the defences away and the sea rolls in, we needed something to stop that flow route into the car park and the amenities and the community. So we built a wall right across the spit. That was an important piece of work that we had to do ahead of the main scheme. We have a construction period of around nine months, and what we're achieving in that period is a replenishment of the beach. We are replacing 100 meters of existing damaged gabion baskets with a flexible concrete mattress. Replacing and repairing the groin field, we're removing some 12,000 tons of stone. We're then installing at the thinnest section of Dawlish Warren a filled geotube, some three meters high by about six meters wide, 10 meter sections weighing something upwards of 300 tons and they're laid end to end and they're buried deep within the dunes over about 400 meters. So under a series of storms, the Dawlish Warren at its thinnest section, the neck doesn't breach and form basically an island and then the rump of the sand spit. The scheme addresses the big problem of sediment shortage because of longshore sediment transport by bringing sediment in from elsewhere and depositing it on the beach in the form of beach nourishment. It was important to us to find the right quality of sand. So what we've done is we've identified a suitable area where we are dredging the sand and then pumping it onto the beach. The engineering challenges in relation to the construction side are difficult access, building amongst a very large number of people, and also trying to program a piece of construction around the constraints of the environment, tides and the weather. It's also an amenity area for holiday makers. It's an internationally important wildlife reserve. So we have to fit the works in around not only what people want to do, but also the important species that live on the site. So we've had a very strict timetable of when we could do works and when we can't do work. The monitoring of a, of a, of a coast protection and flood defense project like this is really important. We would be looking to monitor the beach levels in the future and compare those with the design to see whether we've got our predictions right. And we will also be undertaking monitoring of the ecology of the dune system to see whether or not that's developing as it should. In the future, the, the Warren will look a bit more natural, I think. There'll be better interaction between the beach and the dune. The beach will be fuller, there'll be more sediment. And because of sea level rise in the next 20, 30, 40 years, there may be increased flooding of the low-lying area between the outer dunes and the inner dunes. So you might actually see the development of a nice lake. And at the same time, the Warren will still operate as a natural barrier against coastal flooding for the properties in the estuary. An important objective of the project was to improve the socio-economic well-being of the area. And an improved beach will make it a lot easier for local businesses to attract tourists. The scheme itself isn't justified based on amenity and increasing tourist numbers. It's all based on flood defence need. However, everybody knows it's a win-win to get something in addition to flood defence benefits into a project. We believe the scheme is unique because it provides this balance of soft engineering and looking to the future, the managed realignment, the return to nature, while still protecting through engineered structures the interests of people inside the estuary.